Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, a Piratis live stream. One that, uh, you know, it's our first one in about two weeks. Um, and Arno is going to join us tonight for a nice in depth discussion about handgun combatives, essentially fighting with your handgun uh, and unpack exactly what combatives means what it pertains, the skills you want to start looking at developing from fundamentals all the way up to more intermediate level stuff, how to build those skills, have some comments pertaining our dual facilitated, dual instructed course in Gauteng we had the past weekend. Uh, simple things, take your questions from everything from appendix carry to, you know, uh, what he recommends you start focusing on. And he would already have been in studio uh, his browser keeps blocking him from mic and camera access. And regardless of what he's doing, he doesn't seem to be able to resolve that issue. So he's starting up another computer and will hopefully join us shortly. But in the meantime, um, I'm going to be talking to you guys. So how have all of you been? Bradley, good to see you here this evening as well as everyone else. And hopefully by the time that Arno finally joins us in the studio, I'll keep checking my phone just to make sure he is actually progressing a bit. We'll have a sizable audience, but yeah, everyone seems to be piling in. Uh, new time slot as well. It's the 8 o'clock one as opposed to the 7 o'clock one. It was recommended I try this because people have kids to put to bed. They have dinner to eat and stuff to do. And generally by 8 p.m., most of you have started winding down a bit. So, Richard, good evening. Elgard, good Good evening to you, sir. Good to see you here as well. And um, hopefully... Well, hopefully without any additional technical problems like that, um, things will go fine. Goeienaand, Charles, who like dinner. Um, and don't ask me what happened there. So as is typical of the show, we seem to be having lots of technical problems, uh, especially with Arno side. Um, he's a man that does combatives. He's not someone that specializes in IT. So to give you a bit of an overview about what we did this weekend, we had 18 students, um, many of them brand, brand, brand new in the sense of they have guns, they got their licenses, they haven't really participated in competitions, they haven't put, you know, done any formal training, so to speak and they haven't really had much range time with the guns at all here we go wait a second this looks potentially promising um okay not quite there we go oh my goodness is this going to work yeah, we can see you we can hear you what's going to work what's going to see yeah i can hear the word Ah, oh, fantastisch. Ik was bezig om te begin stress. Ik was dood ergens daar. Ek sies, en ek stress was oor niks nie. Um, kijk, kijk, ons, ons het die bewijse, ok, it doesn't want to work, whatever. Ek weet nie waar hy fout gegaan het nie. Is ons al hier vandag? Ons is rechtstreeks, ja, en hy allemaal sê goeie naand, 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 sal sê, ja. Hi, Kim is hier so, Richard Lemmer. Uh, Richard sê, hy draai rol in kortig baie training, uh, Helgaard um, is ook hier so allemaal, so Arno, wat vir ons is so? Jy lyk baie nekies vanavond, asof jy onder, gestort onder het. Met pajamas, met pajamas is jy onder aan, omdat dit sal half negen is my slaaptijd, ons is cutting it very fine op die stadium. Ek het nou, ek het nou juist vanavond gesê, soos, we're trying a new time slot um, to see, you know, everyone's put their kids to bed, but I forget that Arno is putting himself to bed as well, so uh, does die. Yeah. Um, I want to go sleep. <laughs> and there you are gone. I can't, I can't, I can't even make by the fence straight away because every time I scroll with two fingers, I don't know if it updated the software, it takes me back and it dumps me out of the studio. Um, anyway, enough of that. You don't scroll with two fingers, you don't do this. You do this, yeah, you do this. Yeah. exactly. So, you know what? I, I had this whole idea of talking about handgun combatives and all this other stuff, but I figure we're going to talk about that anyway. So I think let's quickly unpack this weekend's course um, and what happened and what we saw and the whole bang shoot and a bit of, bit of feedback before Brian complains that we never give feedback after, after oh, action yeah. reports. 
Yeah, he was very unhappy that we that we've kept quiet literally two days after we did it. Um, Kiron, I, I think I must first ask you, how are you feeling? <laughs> it was a it was a it was a rough weekend, and and what people don't understand, uh, you, you know, when you give training like that, uh, and you put your heart and soul into it, it's your reputation on the line. You know, yeah. it's so easy to blemish your reputation one shot and you get it wrong. So, have you recovered? Um, reputation wise, no. Physically, yes, I think. Um, so, just to il illustrate, uh, when I got back to my dad just after six on Sunday, um, I drank some sort of concoction he gave me and I showered and I crashed and I was out for like 12 and a half hours. I didn't wake up. I was, I was, I was completely wrecked. I only got to everyone's WhatsApps the next morning. Um, and you know, it was, I was gone. Um, six, a 16 hour course is heavy. I think your smartwatch said something that we were up and down for about 40 kilometers up and down the yeah. line behind the students. No, I, watched for, on yeah, those two. Uh, I know around about 10, 11, we did a thousand steps already. Um, yeah. And on my smartwatch, I'm on medium activity for a hundred percent a day. By the end of Saturday, we were almost close to 300% on activity. So uh, it, it's, it's a lot of work. It, it's a lot of work. Yeah. From, from both the instructors and the students. And I mean, by the end of the Sunday, the guys were, considerably sharper, more aggressive, um, more assertive with their, with their firearm manipulation and gun handling. Um, well, most of them, they had learned how to move, most of them. Um, but you could see the fatigue was also setting in here by three o'clock in the sense of the guys were getting tired. tired. It, was, it was the end of two heavy days. And you know what, Gideon, I think before you really discuss this weekend, I think we should discuss people in general. I was just thinking about this earlier. Um, I don't know if you if you know. Uh, a while back, there was this video floating around on the internet. Uh, a guy with a machete, you know, putting it on the tar and he's swinging at the guy. And the guy does some kind of a judo throw. And <laughs> I mean, the first time I saw this video, I'm like, okay, this is set up. I'm not saying it cannot happen, but I'm like, okay, this, guys, this is not real. And people shared that video and they shared it and shared it and everybody, wow, what a great move and this is so awesome, whatever. But if you go far into the internet, you'll find a clip where they show you, it was a show, it was a police show. Fast forward to some of these videos that you see nowadays uh, where the guys drive in the street and somebody throws out rubbish and whatever and the guy throws it back. And the guys jump out and it hits everybody and it's a one hell of a fight. You get people that share that and say, Hoya hell that or come look so. Okay? But it's a Hollywood movie. It, it, it is it is a Hollywood movie. I mean, even professional people shared that Ponga video believing that that's the truth. So firstly, I think people not not, not everybody, but a lot of people that are so far removed from what is the truth and what is Hollywood fiction? And here's the problem in training. They can't differentiate between what's a mock fight and what is mock training. Yeah. So when they come onto a course like ours or like some other guys as well, they, then they're in for the real thing. And, and, it, and it's kind of a shocker to, to the body. But, but more importantly, it, it amazes me that people cannot differentiate between reality and what's made up and you know they walk onto a course probably with a specific mindset that this is what they're going to do and this is what they're going to achieve and at the end of it it just doesn't happen so i don't know i just wanted to put that out there it bugged me so much that that, that you get people that look at mock fights i mean if you look at if you look at a fight in general and i'm going away of course here go look at hollywood go look at an mmi fight and go look at a street fight they all are massively different. But in training and, and what people see on the internet, I think Hollywood thing and training is the same thing. You know, you're so, in a Jason board. But yeah. Um, see, see here's, here's, a, here's a bit of a personal bullshit detector. So how, how long is the average boxing round? How many seconds? Three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Three so minutes you've got... and, a, and a good MMA fight is five minutes. Okay. So that's, that's per round. Okay. Yes. 
go, I would challenge anyone of medium fitness to go work a medium bag for three minutes and tell me what they feel like, you know, after that, because most people will feel pretty like winded after 45 seconds to a minute of properly working a bag bag doesn't hit back um bag doesn't move around it's really just hanging there um bag bags not particularly threatening um a hollywood fight carrying on for many minutes in the street that's not going to happen in real life yeah, not, not just that Hirion. i challenge there's some people that, that watches our show that probably does MMA and Jiu-Jitsu and whatever, and, and that'll be fine. But I challenge the normal average person just for a three-minute consequence light-based sparring round and see if you will make it. Just, at three minutes, just, just a light-based but with some consequences sparring round and see what happens after that. But yeah, no, <laughs> we are off topic right now. But in any case, it just amazes me uh, what people... what people believe and, and, and you know we, we kind of in an in a environment as you say you know your your reputation can be tarnished so quickly but you build so hard or you used to work so hard to build a reputation today what do you need you need fancy clothing fancy equipment a couple of fancy moves you need a massive marketing campaign and wrap around sunglasses don't forget that Very and, and there, you, there you have it and you have to appeal to the inner jason Bourne give people what they want, not what they need, and you're a success. I mean, you're an immediate success. They, you don't have to have transferable skills. You don't have to have honesty, dignity, humility. You don't need any of those things. You just need a great marketing campaign. And, and it's not going against people. I mean, the most popular instructor in South Africa, sure, his own student doesn't even own a firearm. And, 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 and that's the most popular instructor. It, yeah, it, the mind boggles, <laughs> but it's not about that. But yeah, in any case, <laughs> let's get back to the weekend. So, so, so the weekend. Hi, Alan. By the way, um, uh, and thanks to Tian for for tuning in. Like, and what Tian says here is actually, um, first, massive shout out to um, Pete Leroux. Pete did, in my opinion, Murava well um like really well this weekend he, he went from in my opinion and maybe this is a, a misimpression from my side because i met pit for the first time uh pitleri being the the head honcho at soccer Liga. by the way good organization go support them they stand up for the small and medium enterprises um he looks so like a I'm mild I, i'm i'm a micro enterprise so no, I'm no, no. To help me. on, on stealth work on stealth work so a <laughs> bit looked like a mild mannered um actuary actuarial type person and maybe he was a little bit mild mannered on the first day but by the end of day two the the man had developed what from from my untrained eye it appeared to be a quite a decent killer instinct and he was getting real failures in the Glock he was shooting due to that fine mind dust interfering with a magazine not working properly. It got into everything. And he was clearing it. I mean, he was owning the gun. He was manipulating it properly, assertively, with confidence. He, he kept it running and he completed all his drills, even though the unexpected, you know, failures that weren't set up, that weren't part of the drill, started happening. And it was so cool and and rewarding to see a guy that have spe has spent 16 hours of uh, kind of with you the fact that the stuff that you went through with him sunk in and that he's you know he's performing bloody well under the circumstances you know from from where he was where to where he got to and and that was cool to see it was nice to see. Well, well everyone did well um there was a massive improvement in everybody you're right. I mean, the environment threw uh, a lot of things at the students that weekend. The, the, only, the only negative I will say, I see this time and time and time and again, and, and, and this is where you and you train people, you have to be so careful actually not to do stuff fast. Uh, because people performed well by day two, but to the T, everybody still went too fast. Yep. <laughs> and that's kind of contrary to what people want you to believe. Go faster, go faster, go faster. No, go slower. <laughs> and and that's, that's almost on any course. When, when, you, when you're in 
at the course and, and you have a good shoot or a good test or whatever, people want to go too fast. And that relies a message because it's perceived pressure. Because at the end of the day, now it's perceived pressure. You have a specific drill that you need to do. And just that pressure adds to speed. And people have to remember if that adds to your speed and you over your, your effective level, how much more are you going to overwork yourself when somebody actually tries to kill you? And that, that's what I warn people. I'm not saying go slow, but I, but I warn people to say, please slow the hell down. You know, if I look at probably 90% of my own draws, they probably two, two and a half seconds that I train at. That is just, you know, just to go through the motions. When I need it on tap, you speed up. But, but people go too fast. And I always say that people go too fast because we've set up an environment that speed is everything. But we have to go to arrive alive. Speed kills. And speed kills the wrong people sometimes. So, so here's the thing with speed. And I found I'm very much a victim of this myself is we genuinely have a poor perception of it. We have a bad perception, unless you have a fair amount of experience, a bad perception of how fast or slow we're actually moving in reality. And we have a, we have a bad ability to translate that speed and performance outcome or rather connect the two stupid examples. So um, the, the, the now infamous, uh, two by two by two drill from Dave Spaulding. You know, Arun is already leaving the room. Um, so I do try to practice this often. It's not the only thing I do, but I, I think it's a cool barometer. And what I found with it is, if I if I wind the, the, the taps open, the fastest I can get my first shot generally onto that three by five card at seven meters is just over one point two seconds. And then I'm going everything at it, like literally everything. And then I find I consciously slow down and I get that first shot off in 1.53, 1.55. And that's me feeling like I'm taking my time. And I mean, we're talking about a difference of maybe two to three tenths of a second. Um, that's not a huge time yet. You know, strictly speaking, I should even be going much slower than that. And I found that I don't, my perception of time about how fast I'm moving is n not, it doesn't feel as accurate as it is. I'm yeah, thinking I'm going a lot slower than I am, and I should still be going more slow than I am. But, you know, it's, it's kind of, I mean, when you look at people shoot, and, and we discuss this over and over again, if you just look at your average draw, if you look at, Go on the internet and you look at all these sub-second draws and all these fast draws or whatever. What you'll notice is the whole action is super fast, okay? And it's weird, but it's wrong. If you want to really go faster, your first action up until you get the gun in both of your hands should be fast. And then from there on, you slow down. But people tend to rush that whole operation. And, and I tell people, well, you have to get the gun out quickly, get to high level quickly, and then, as I said, ABS, you push it out. You, you'll notice, even if I do a sub-second row, you'll probably notice me going faster than the gun, but the, that the push-up is not at that optimal pace because you need to buy time to be on the sides. <laughs> and that's where it comes to the presentation and getting the gun, where a lot of people want to go, that, that whole fast movement in and out. And that's just too much. So I always tell people, focus on the first part. Get the gun, get the grip, whatever, speed it up, and then you slow it down. Because you cannot perform all these drills at, 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 at the same speed. It's just a re recipe for disaster. And as you say, a point one of a point one five or seconds is nothing, but it's huge on getting onto the site and, and exactly. being able to be more effective. Well, that's the other thing. And it's uh, I'm yet to meet a person that can punch a gun out with such consistency that everything is nice and aligned at his max extension. That's just not how biomechanics works. I mean, <laughs> not, not, not when you're trying to align things that are a couple of millimeters in breadth across precisely setup with each other. Either. You can do that with a setup draw. Get your body aligned, get the target distance height. Yeah, you can kind of perform that time and time and again. But that's a setup draw. And, and we need to be honest with ourselves. We are sometimes just purely 
bullshitting ourselves by the way we put a target in front of us and try. It's always on the range, we're always ready, always at a set distance, set height, set everything. A as I told you, when I go over to the attack sense system, now you know me, I can, I can probably, and I'm not specifically fast, I don't focus on being fast, but I can consistently draw the whole day, every day, all day, all distances at one and a half seconds, easily. When I put that attack sense system in front, attack sense system in front of me, I put maybe five targets, and I know the first red light that pops up, I must shoot. A, first, I need to figure out which red light it is, and then align and get it. I sometimes travel too close to a two-second shot. And, and not just that, just that stupid system sometimes forces me to fouling my own draw, because just of that added bit of, you know, you must visual, you have to have your visual acuity and, 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 and figure out what's going on. And then you realize, because now you work on sight and not on sound, that you are behind the curve. Because what? Uh, you probably on sight, uh, correct me if there's clever people, probably a quarter quarter of a second slower than you are on, on, yep. on hearing the cue. So no, you're that correct. your mind plays a role. And you're like, oh, I'm slower. And then you're trying to speed up the pace. And, and this is why I tell people, if you work at 100% pace all the time, and you are under the arrest and you're not prepared for that, you want you are going to try to go faster, which is just going to give you a recipe for disaster. Not always, exactly. but there's a huge chance of that leading to a recipe of disaster. Well, that's the thing. And uh, I think we had a, a chat about it earlier today. And I mean, it's, a, it's an issue that people brought up with me. It's an issue I have myself is um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get consistency from an appendix carry draw position. Um, I mean, a lot of it depends on how high or how low the gun rides. I mean, the lower it is, the harder you're going to, to uh, harder time you're going to have to have a consistent grip and then speed out of the holster. What do you do? Like, what are your recommendations? You've been carrying appendix for a bloody long time. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so while we're on this, phew, there's still some of that sand on my gun here. <laughs> so let's see. By the way, I, I put a two kg connector into mine finally. Thank you. You can a woman eh? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let me see if I've got my pajamas on. <laughs> the, these trousers actually doesn't even have a button anymore, so we have to be careful. So, well, the, yeah, I mean, the people are tuning. Um, this is not the way the setup should be. And, and this is a problem that I hope the sound is all right. And I know my. No, it sounds perfect. It's not the way I wanted to log in. So, I'm going to go through a couple, there's a couple of more things that you can do or can look at, but I've seen over years and years and years, especially on appendix. So what happens if I let me just move in the right direction, is that kind of okay? That That's great. Okay. So what happens here is you complaining that you can't actually access that pistol easily which means when you were carrying strong side, you were able to do this. Get the whole hand in and the thumb down in. Okay? That's and it. now all of a sudden, because this thing is wedged into you, you cannot get in there. Um, and, and, and now you don't know where to purchase the pistol. So there's a couple of, couple of ways that you can do. One of the techniques is what a lot of guys do, is as they come in, they actually push the pistol forward. Okay, that's not my preferred way, but it is a way. So when you come in, you push it in so that thumb gets where the perch is, you open up that gap slightly to get your fingers in, and then you get it out. And the other way that I prefer is, yes, I'm going to say this um, for a split second, I'm telling you this, the pistol isn't under perfect control. I, I don't have it all, so if I have the interference there, I will have a problem. I'm, I know it, I've trained for it, and it's fine. So what I do is, if the camera can see, I basically scoop with my three fingers underneath. So basically, yeah, that angle is going to work. So instead of trying to do this, I'm doing this. I'm coming underneath. I don't have a full grip. And then I just use these fingers and this also is just tight, so I'm just going to loosen it a little bit. So then I use these fingers to bring it up. And as I bring it out, I walk it in. Look at what my fingers are doing. I walk it in. And then I get my consistent grip. Because I can't get 
the normal outside uh, it's go like this the normal outside the grip where I can come in deep get it out so what I do is I come underneath it I scoop it out right there I have a bit of a gap on my fingers still as I bring it up I rectify it in the motion that that's kind of what works for me because you can't get that consistent grip it's either kind of pushing it forward and i'm pretty sure there's a couple of other ways to do it but you need to look at how high how low and how fat you are <laughs> i mean <laughs> well it, it's one of those things and, and well, how much that, that pistol is pushing in well what i'm definitely guilty of personally is i'm carrying mine way too low in the appendix position i mean um it is i see that in, in a lot of people Yes, yeah, they carry it's, it extremely low. And, and if you can't get at least some purchase in your fingers, if you can't get some purchase in there, you screw. I mean, it's on yeah. the belt line, and, and, and then you can't get there, and you can't get there, and what you do now is inconsistent. I have an inconsistent wiggle, but it's consistent. It's like come out, wiggle it in my hand, and push it out, but it's always there, always the same. And remember, when you carry strong side or whatever, you're working with the curvature of your hip, which basically opens up a little gap for you there in any case. So, yeah, it, it's something to work on, but it's something you need to play. But just some guidance, you know, push it forward or try to get your fingers in and go slow. Uh, what I always suggest people, if your holster, if you can adjust your retention, loosen your holster first, just so that you can understand how to get it. Uh, go slow, 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 loosen the retention, and once you've got it, whack that retention back in again and try to work it. Try it. Maybe it works for you. Um, it, it works for me, but it's not a guarantee that it's going to work for everybody. Well, it's also the thing, and practice that draw stroke. I mean, you didn't get there automatically. You put in a lot of time and effort to get that consistency. I yes. mean, now that you've got it established, it's easier to maintain. But in the beginning, yeah. you have to put in the work, whether you it, like it, it or not. It, it takes... It takes probably months and months to get it right but even on that you have to you have to ask yourself you know i get it if six shooter you're gonna uh, let's just stand the time you should shoot at a target i was about to yeah. say it depends on distance on many things we're going to get to this question yeah. in a, in a, in a so, moment so i get it if you're an if six shooter or a world champion i get it that you draw an hour a day i get it but you can probably improve your draw in a couple of months if you just draw but you have to ask yourself i'm building a skill at the cost of what other skills maybe i don't even in my fight i might not even have to draw now i've spent two thousand draws i have a more of a quick draw but this guy's close and he's stabbing me and i don't know how to handle that so it's it's a balance of scars you know people are looking at this is the selling point nowadays a fast draw is the uber thing uh, it, it's funny, I do a, f <laughs> I'm going to say this and I don't feel sorry for myself. I, I do a sub second draw on a plate, 8 or 10 meters, with a safety holster, concealed appendix. Nobody who has about it. Somebody else does it for, and, and a guy gets a million hits. It, but the f it's just stupid, the focus that we just it's, put on that one segment. It's gun fixation. And yes. we had a long chat about this in one of the previous courses where you blixened me in your garage. And never, never happened. Um, and it's one of those cases where you've got a guy on you. You've got that one opportunity to get the draw right. If you fumble, leave the gun, deal with the guy, create space, then go back to the gun. And you see a lot of guys in the class with the dummy gun. They keep trying to get the gun out. While this because guy is stabbing spend, them or moving them and they fixate on the gun completely. Hours, they spend hours on focusing on doing this. That's it. That That is the beginning or, or the end. But nothing in between. Where I'd rather spend hours on kicking a bag, trying to get a draw, that bag, swinging back, going back to the bag. And then, because I, I, I've done some draws where I get a stoppage or an empty mag or whatever close in. And some people will ask me, and, and I'll punch you. You've seen this drone. Some, some people will ask me, did I set it up? I'm like, no, I didn't set it up. That just comes naturally. But it took a lot of practice. And it takes a lot of partner practice to actually get that into your head, not to be fixated on the gun. Because, I mean, if you, you know, if you fell that your own draw a second, one and a half seconds later, and what? 
Tula girl, people can move around seven meters. A guy can stab you probably eight, ten times in one and a half seconds while you're focusing on the drill. The thing that I dislike about the Tula drill, okay, let me rephrase. The Tula drill is really useful to demonstrate a concept and it's a nice benchmark, but um, it assumes that the defender is going to be stationary. And if someone is charging at you with a knife and you're planted like a tree and you're going, well, I've got a sub-second draw and I'm not going to foul it and I'm just going to stand here like a total moron and do my super consistent sub-second draw and put two holes right in his heart um, in under two seconds because I've got that kind of time. I, I, I don't think that's how it works in real life. I mean, maybe you can educate. No, even, like it definitely listen, doesn't work. Now, let's not discard. Anything can happen. But even yeah. if you pull that off, do you really think in that one and a half, two seconds, that is really going to stop the guy in his tracks. So think about it. We're not talking about you see a guy hijacking, you're shooting, you're shooting, he's shooting back and he's running away. You're not talking about a guy that's charging. So his momentum is already on top of you. So let's say you're fast. You're going to shoot him at two and a half, three meters. Even if you plump him through the heart, you think he's going to stop dead in his tracks? No, he's probably not. I mean, I use the example. <clears throat> you go shoot a little springbok with a 306. And you shoot him through the heart. That spring will go, <laughs> runs another 100 meters. That's a, what, 180 grain bullet moving at over 2,000 feet per second, shooting a little animal that weighs 40 kilograms. And That's it's a non combatant animal. So now you've got a combatant animal, 70, 80 kilograms, and you're shooting him with 147 grains at 1,000 feet per second. But boof, he's going to fall. I'll shoot him my 45. And you'll probably just piss him off. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's probably what's going to happen. Um, yes, you get a clean fight. You get a good fight. One shot, it stops. But if you're going to base your training on that, um, I'll rather not. I'll rather base my training on everything goes wrong. And if it doesn't, then what did I lose? Exactly. Now, just there's a point I wanted to bring up exactly on that. But before we move away from TK's question, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my metric and then Arnie, you give him yours. And there is no really such a thing as a standard time. It depends on what distance you're gonna shoot. If you need to put shots on a man size, well, torso size target in the A zone, so to speak, at 15 meters, your standard time is gonna be considerably longer than at contact distance, which is gonna be considerably shorter than at seven meters. It's gonna depend. As a general benchmark, if you can put two shots in under two seconds from concealment on an A5 piece of paper at seven meters, you are doing pretty well handgun fundamentals wise. That's a nice benchmark for where your skill set is pertaining everything that 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 pertains to that specific fundamental skill set. That doesn't mean you're particularly good at fighting with your gun, but it means that you probably have decent trigger and control. You've got decent sight alignment. You know how to put your sights on the target. And you probably have a fairly consistent grip and draw if you can get under two seconds consistently. But that's just a benchmark. There are many benchmarks and that's just one. Arne, what do you reckon? Uh, you, you should have a standard. You should yeah. have a goal that you want to work with. But let's be honest, all of this is superficial. It is absolutely superficial. I'm going to the range, I'm standing in my garage, I'm doing whatever. I know I'm going to draw and I know what I'm going to shoot at, I know when it's going to happen, I know all of those things. So we go in this surreal environment where I stand there and I'm ready, I'm warmed up, I draw on fire and I get my one and a half seconds. Does that relate to one and a half seconds out there? I don't know. I would love to be able, but you can't do it in a fight when we go to the gym, actually to be able to time from the time that you decide to go to the garden when it comes out what the time is. Uh, but even in that case, it's surreal. It's, it, it, it's bullshit. It's, it's a trading environment. I know the guy's going to stab me with a blunt knife. I know I need to shoot him. You need to go through that. I've always maintained for my own personal use uh, a one and a half seconds concealed draw from all different hand positions, concealment, three, five, seven, and 10 meters, almost from any position, except for maybe prone and things like that. That's kind of where I like to put it at. But there's, 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 there's a three second draw might be good for you. Uh, a 0.75 draw might not <laughs> even help you. But me as a standard, 
one and a half seconds on the stand up, but it boils down to what you say two two rounds to uh, two seconds. So you can draw at one and a half seconds and have a good shot on. You can make that second round at two seconds. Uh, for instance, my my uh, close protection, one of my close protection entry standard draws is 10 meters, two rounds, headshot, two seconds. Uh, that's it. Uh, it's not as strict as the dice falling draw. And then we go seven meters and eventually we do it at three meters, hands from an upper position, drawn fire, two rounds, three meters, and something like 1.7 seconds. So it's always in and around the one and a half, two seconds. Um, but you can't wing it. Here's the thing, if you are winging it at one and a half seconds, you don't have a one and a half second draw. A yes. one and a half second draw, I don't want to say I, I'm not good or fast, but I am extremely comfortable. I almost sometimes get to the point where I lose focus, but I have enough time to get up to the sides and do everything. So you can't stand there, oh, I made one and a half seconds, oh, I, I don't know. How do you know you hit the target, follow through side picture? That's how I know. If you can't control it in there, you're probably going to go too fast. But you have to go fast sometimes. You have to, you have to, if for you to improve, you have to go over that pace, get those groupings out, uh, open, and then bring it in. But remember, your eye, eventually, human body and eye can only do that much in, in so much time. If you're floating around ridiculous times, your eyes cannot see that. I don't care what you say. Human beings, your eyes just cannot move and, and 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 work that fast but yeah one and a half two seconds two rounds um you can probably move on and do other stuff than just standing there and drawing yeah um i was about to say like that's a fairly decent time um and you're probably going to refer to things like you see a flash of the front side more than actual real sight picture at that sort of at that yeah, sort of um, or, or, well i'll be honest well, it depends what you're shooting at yeah it depends on, on one and a half seconds, five, five meters, something like that. If I get my clearance quite well, I can actually have a pretty solid side picture yeah. where I can almost start shooting at holes. Um, but that's me. Uh, I'm, I'm used to it. Uh, if you beginning and whatever, you, you're going to start off at two seconds and get a flash side picture. As you get better, you, this is almost how you should do it. Flash side picture, flash side picture at, 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 two, uh, at two seconds. Up until you get to that speed, we actually have a proper side picture. That's maybe another way to, of going and say, well, if you can plant a proper side picture, you can now probably go a little bit faster. But, but it, it's difficult to say because if you're standing in front of students and you just have a little bit of a mishap and you chase for that one and a half seconds, then it's just like you're just throwing it up on that flash side picture. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. well, there's a lot of confusion on side picture, side picture, side picture. What should it be? It should be there, but it's not always perfect. It's just it, it, it just should kind of be in that direction, and and you just take the shot. Well, for example, to the, the obsession with um, with speeds and shot placement, all this sort of thing. Um, I think most people, well, in fact, no, let me not assume this. We're a South African audience. Many people may not be familiar with the infamous 1986 FBI Miami shootout. Now, go read that that after action report, or just go read the story. And a whole bunch of things went wrong right at the beginning in that story. Not Not all of it to do with the guns. But you ended up with a situation where you had two dangerous gunmen and a whole bunch of FBI agents, and they shot these guys full of holes. And it didn't stop them. Even though they had a whole bunch of unsurvivable wounds, the guys kept on fighting, and they shot the shit out of the FBI in the amount of time it took them to eventually succumb to the wounds they had. And it, after the fact, there was a whole bunch of, that's where the 40 short and wimpy cartridge came from as a, 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 as a knee jerk. They started looking for equipment-based solutions to what essentially probably was a training problem. Um, but there's this thing where, cool, if you're fast enough to put two shots or three shots in the guy at this distance, um, I get why benchmarks are important. But I think the way people have been treating drills to some degree, especially the Tula drill, is as if you go, yeah, I've won this gunfight in my head or this 
knife fight against the gun in my head because I can achieve this drill consistently. And it's exactly as you say, sure, you can put in the time and the effort to be that good, but at the cost of what other skills development are you doing it? And are you actually training yourself to think combatively, behave combatively, actually be combative? And that brings us to actually the real topic. What is being combative? I thought our real topic was to talk about the weekend <laughs> training, which we didn't do much of. But but I want to put a stop in there. I'm not saying that it's okay to be a sloth. Okay, yeah. I'm not saying it's okay no, we're not saying to be that. slow. Um, it's like it's like almost, and this is not a short at competition shooter. I love shooting competitions and whatever. And the guy said, "Ah, oh, it's good training. It, 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 you bury yourself, whatever." And what are the things in in IDP? Let's say you meet a guy in 2010. He's a marksman. So in 2021, you meet him and you ask him. Oh, what level are you shooting? Uh, still a marksman. I'm like, okay, what have you been doing the last 10 years? Um, <laughs> you know, okay, if you are uh, not being mean to marksmen, I, I can't remember what the times I can't, I don't know how good you need to be to be classified as a marksman, but you have to also be realistic. And let's just say uh, a marksman is, is probably too slow. I'm just using that as an example. I, I can't remember out of my head, so apologies for any marksmen. But I mean, if you're plonking around 10 years being a marksman and you're floating in two and a half second draw, you know, you're wasting your time. Maybe you should just add up. And, and that's why I look at a lot of guys. They're like, oh, I've been shooting so many years. Or I ask students, how many rounds do you shoot? 5,000 rounds a, a year. I'm like, dude, why, why are you still so slow? Why are you still so horrible? If, if you're going to house all that amount of ammo, yes, in my earlier life, did I shoot a lot? Yes, I worked hard to get over a point. You, you know, if, if I shoot out in my own personal training a thousand rounds a year, it's a lot. I might get to that amount on training. I mean, at least on two courses, I've shot about 150 rounds. That, that's my training. Um, but I had to work to that point. But if, 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 if you give a person a thousand rounds a month, and you're not improving, unless you are really good. You're not improving, then you're probably wasting your time. You are just exactly. you can just about go gamble because you're throwing away your money. That's that's just what I sometimes think. It's it's amazing how much people will shoot with no goal, with no end result in place, staying on 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 one level. If it if you enjoy it, it's fine. It's just maybe for your own life and your family, maybe you just want to improve it slightly. So off topic. What was that thing? No. You you want to talk about the combat stuff yeah yeah but on that i think look um i, I think combatives is is the mindset and i think if you're staying slow after 10 years there's something psychological or mental that's holding you back that's preventing you from pushing yourself because it's great if you're consistent at a two second rule but Unless you're pushing yourself to a failure point and you say, cool, you're trying a bit faster and you're still doing okay at 1.9 and you're still doing okay at 1.8, but at 1.75, you're just failing. It's like, great, there's your failure point. So instead of hanging around comfortably at two seconds, train it at 1.8 until you're comfortable at 1.8 as you were at 1.2. And then start pushing faster. Then maybe you discover your failure point is at 1.65 or even 1.55. And then you just, you know, carry on doing the same. And that's how you improve. But Hilion, here's the nice thing about shooting. Not so much fighting. Um, shooting, you can keep on improving till a very late age. I mean, you can move into your 50s, 60s. 65, 70, and still be a reasonable fast shooter. Um, so, some, so yeah, I start playing a role and yada, yada, yada. I can use a lot of excuses. So in, in, in shooting, it's not like you reach your 40s and like, no, I'm getting old. Uh, I'm just freaking lazy. <laughs> That's why I'm shooting so slow. I mean, I could probably, with a bit of ammo, I can improve 50, 20% easily. Uh, but on fighting, not so much. I know I'm on the downward slope. Uh, the chin is going, the balance point, the reference point, everything is going. Speed, power, uh, reflexes is going, and, and you can try to maintain it, but to, to improve fighting skill beyond a certain age, you're just trying to maintain. But shooting, you can improve till a much later age, unless you've got a physical problem, you know, disability that keeps you back. I mean, look at Jerry Michelik. 
when he's how old and he's still one of the fastest shooters in the world. Yes, he's a freak of nature. It's probably a very bad example to use. Well, I was about to use Dave Spaulding, who's basically nearly 70. I mean, he's heading towards 70. He is still shooting his own drills, which are difficult drills. Yes, very, in, very like, high level drills. He's shooting high level drills where the cut, where the, where, where the ideal is to achieve them in two seconds. He's coming in well under two seconds. He's shooting them cold, you yeah. know, not even like warm up. That's the difference between him and a lot of guys. He walks up, he shoots it, he walks down. A lot of guys will spend a whole bucket of brass and then then go and with him. He walks up there cold. But I'm, 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 I'm that guy. And I mean, and <laughs> you that I'm guy. out shooting. <laughs> And I'm out shooting as mediocre as I am. Mm. Um, people 10 years younger than me who are much into sports shooting. So I'm like, the age thing is very, in, in shooting, it's, it's very deceptive in the sense of you can get much older guys who are incredibly competent at com, you know, combatively shooting their handguns, um, much more so than younger guys. Well, then again, the older you get, you have to, right? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what the what the age limit is, but I think probably old body class or whatever starts at fifty years or whatever. So let's just say I'm competing, and in two years they they write me up in the in the super senior class. class or whatever. Yeah. I will actually be offended. <laughs> I will be offended because now I need to compete against a bunch of old farts, which I'm one of. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. That's not. That's not. That's. But if you're going to put me in a cage, yeah, I'll give me the 65, 70 year old guys. <laughs> I don't want to fight in a cage against the 25 year old. <laughs> I mean, they're going to slaughter me. Uh, but but you know, on shooting, it's like uh, yes, unless a stage requires a lot of movement or whatever, uh, then you are going to lose some time. But on the plane shooting skill, there shouldn't be a, a difference or an excuse. And that's kind of the thing also in, in um, I mean, uh, we're going so off topic, but it's a fun discussion. I think Brian we really like, should. When are you going to talk about the weekend's training? I'm, uh, maybe next well, 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 the weekend's training, uh, there's not much to say about it, except that it was, I think it was successful. The guys worked really hard. I mean, we saw stuff that we always see, which is equipment yeah. failure or rather bad equipment choices. And let's, then the guys. Well, 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 you know, let's get just just get back. A lot of people disagree with us. Let's just get back to the venerable um, C clip versus clip. J clip debate. Yes. Okay. Where, uh, yes, this camera angle is. Why do you have two, two different clips on your rig? Yeah, though? on this one, I've got uh, I've got a J clip here and, and, and a C clip here. There's a reason for that. Just because I've been too lazy to to make the correct size. But yeah, I've got that's a that's clips. a good that's a good reason. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm lazy. I'm I'm allowed to be lazy. But guys, I, I, and and you've seen it on over the weekend. These things fail. Okay. And people get highly offended. It's not your child. It's not your dog. Don't be offended about it. These clips fail. And they're all, oh, they never break. I'm not talking about breaking. You saw. Come out holstering there. Almost each and every course I saw. It. See that. And then the numbnuts, the gear holes, the guys who get gear for free will say, oh, yo, but you need a belt. You know what? Some people have got children to feed. You know, some people have got rights. and People have got lives. Okay? So... You can't expect a person to fork out a thousand bucks on a belt. Yeah, it's it's worth it. But you know, mm, thousand bucks a year or feeding my child tonight. Ah, I'm going to feed my child. <laughs> so your average person's equipment is always not always, but mostly not going to be up there. And and then they say, yeah, it's a belt. It's a that. No, it's a damn clip. Okay, it's a stupid clip. I mean, get old. Look at how pretty this thing looks. Pool noodle and plasters and whatever. I mean, this is disgusting, but this works. I mean, why why would I spend more money if the damn thing works? So yeah, it's all. Well, disgusting. I was yeah. I, I was going to make a, a, an example of Sebastian. Um, he he came with the worst belts I think I've <laughs> ever seen. Okay, but that man, um, all he did is he just tightened it in that typical Bulgarian like, eh, what's the problem? He tightened that the, the fuck out of that belt and um he just he just forced through sheer stubborn willpower his That's, equipment to behave if 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 your belt is cheap tighten it <laughs> yes 
especially the appendix, you're going to start getting some blood flow issues and whatever. But there are ways of working around. Um, for one, people pitch up with two belts. But it's like you can almost see his anus because the belt is hanging down <laughs> below. Lift your bloody belt, tighten it, and it will what? be much better. Ah, see, there's somebody um, who's agreeing with the uh, Jacobs file. Um, no, no, yeah, over like, a dozen uh, of the things. And whatever. Uh, mind you, I had a, I had a, I think this weekend I had a a, a C clip break, a little point on the C clip break, but but it was still holding up, so they will break. But the chances of them failing it is dramatic, and and you know it's funny, it's become a thing. But we've been saying this from the time these things came out. Um, we've been saying this. There's nothing new about it, and people go arguments, guys. It just don't work. It's a 75 bucks replacement part. Uh, I mean, <laughs> do you get angry with somebody if he walks past your car and say your car has got a flat? No, your car has got a flat. You, you, you don't get personally insulted because you've got a flat tire. So you've got one of these clips, you've got a flat tire, okay? Fix your flat tire. It's, it's no. nothing personal. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and now I've completely forgotten what we actually were talking about before we got into the J clip debate. But um, no idea. Um, well, also the cause and the fact that, uh, you know, you see you see interesting equipment, you see equipment failures, and you see people being forced to work around it. And, I mean, that is the real EDC out there. I mean, that's not the EDC we see on the internet and on the Instagram accounts. And, and, and that's, not a swipe at, that's not a swipe at anybody. Um, it's just a case of... Kirion, I've said this, and I say this from courses, and be offended. I used to be one of those people. Yeah. It comes with training as well, where people say, uh, you know, they listen to a Green Beret and uh, Pink Panty and whatever. This guy's got this pedigree and 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 and, and. there's a huge basic difference. dude stuff. Uh, early. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I, that's a long story. I, I love that guy. Like Just like don't show me long my words. Uh, any case. <laughs> By the way, Alpha, chat to Nick. Nick's got some space C clips. Uh, he tends to get them in. We can get you some new C clips if yours break. Cool. Excellent. Um, so, so okay. It, it's and a lot of guys on the EDC pages, whatever. Um, I love I'm blocking people nowadays uh, and, and unfollowing them. But in any case, makes my life so much easier. Um, they they actually come from a perspective: a people have got money, and b they are sports shooters. There is a sports shooter average. A sports shooter average is way above an average person carrying. Okay? Yep. The average person carrying doesn't spend all that money on it. And an average person, and I apologize if you see yourself as an average person, their skills are really down low. And, and, and you have to understand when we say this, it's like... When I look at skills, I, I don't look at how you possibly will perform in an IPSIC match. When you have to understand, it's like all of us can drive. You, you can drive, I can drive, well, most of us can kind of drive. But if I put you now in an F1, is that what that is? I, 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 those cars that zoom, 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 and the guys get paid. Well, well, well the, 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 it's a Formula One car. Don't ask okay. me what the chassis and the engine is, but right. I mean, so, so any case, that, that, most that, of us. Most of us will not even apparently be able to put that thing into first gear or even if they work with gears and pull away. Most of us won't be able to get out of the pits. Okay. But when you go to a this fight, you're a expecting, fact. yeah, you're expecting a person who drives a little Uno, okay, they don't make them, to go into that F1 car and take a race. So that's a comparison that you make. So luckily, there's a lot of luck involved. But if you, if you take on what a bad fight can look like and what an average person's skill level is, the people are fooling themselves. Um, the people are really, really fooling themselves on, on what the average person's skill level is. And, and people on the internet need to be more sensitive towards that. They, they need to be more sensitive towards what a person's skill level is, the time he's got, the money he's got, and the interest he's got. I mean, it's like it's a bloody religion. It's like guns, 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 guns. guns. What's up with that? It's it's almost the same like saying, if I have to go climb into an MMA cage right now, I will be murdered. 
absolutely murdered. So if I'm going to have to, so if I go to a jiu-jitsu class, they will fold me like a freaking little lumpy, okay? And you have to admit it because if I'm going to, if I'm going to take my skill towards that, those people's skill, I'm skillless. And that's what I'm saying. If you have to take your shooting skill into what you might require to do in a fight, you have to be honest with yourself. Yes, that jiu-jitsu guy, I might just get lucky. I might just get my finger somewhere that it shouldn't be and I might win. But the average skill level out there is low and the average interest isn't that high um, and, and the commitment isn't that high and it shouldn't be. You know, this is where we aim at. Yeah, do your secret school stuff, but I'm saying that if the average man listens and don't look at the internet, he can become above average very quickly. But the internet is killing the average man because the average Modern. man looks at a video and that video is all wrong and that's what he learns and he comes on a course and he fights. Anyway, that, that's the well, well, that's, should, uh, well, that's the... We, we almost at an hour again. People are probably like, no, 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 whatever. No, they're still, they're, they're still here. They're still here. But I mean, um, I think if if you're keen, we should we can try to have this discussion again next week. But I'll bring it in an hour earlier, so you're not so close to your bedtime. Um, <laughs> and, and the reason the, the the reason why is I'm pertaining realism, and it's almost impossible. No, no, not almost. It's entirely impossible to simulate reality on a square range. Oh. It's just you're, you're, you're not going to ever get there. Um, and I'm not a proponent of saying shooting sports will get you killed in the street. I think that's hyperbolically stupid. Um, I think there is a hazard that you can pick up habits on a sports shooting range that may stand you in bad stead if you don't recognize them and don't mitigate against that sort of habit forming. But that's a whole another in-depth hour-long discussion mm -hmm. on its own. But there was that case of... Uh, an Ipsic shooter uh, who's a jeweler who's um, yeah, uh, yeah sure, you got it uh, I'm rubbing my eyes talking about oh, his bedtime, it's been a heavy week um, and we have another stream tomorrow night so tune in for you, that don't one, have ten, Gideon, you don't have 10 dogs and 2 kids what, what's your problem? <laughs> why are you so tired? Um, it's just uh, life, life in general. Hello, Amy and hi, Kim. Yes, thank you. We will definitely bring Arnie back for more reality-based discussions. Um, so the, this guy was an epic shooter, was, and the emphasis on was, uh, his uh, shop got attacked. He didn't barricade himself in. He went to look for the armed robbers. He found one, was shooting at the guy, but he was leaning through the doorway as he was shooting at the guys and in his about three o'clock there was another one that he didn't see who was leaning through the doorway and the guy walked right up to him put his gun against the guy's head and i don't even know if he knew the guy was there before he got his brains blown out to point blank and his gun stolen and the guy went off and that's a case of i mean the guy's standing there isosceles like full frontal shooting at the guys attacking him for his dealership um this is the difference between combatives and the difference between square range shooting is the two things are very different. Um, the, the, there's a massive synergy between the two. I always say, I wish yep. every student that comes to me has at least shot a year worth of matches. Uh, yep. Really, I, I'm like, yes, guys, I, I just wish you, you, you shot some competition i mean i used to shoot competition etc um but it's it's different and and sometimes as i would see you said yeah it's simple it's just a change of mindset he's right he's 100 right it's just a change of mindset but what he doesn't tell you probably five percent of people maybe ten percent are able to do that mindset change i'm honest enough there's a lot of reasons i stop uh, competition shootings, but uh, shooting matches. But one of the biggest reasons was I was worried that I cannot make that mindset distinction and, and have that switch. I didn't have that. I'm yeah. like, I was starting to shoot my matches. Unfortunately, I became the first master, and that was stupid. I should have none, never done that because then people want you to win. So now you want people you to win and compete, but I shot matches 
uh, pardon the word, more realistically, more the way I would like to competitively um, do something. And that was starting to kill me. And, and I was getting concerned that I cannot make the distinction between this, this sport and, and then what I need to do. That's me, it might not be you. So it's nothing against the sport. I mean, probably if it wasn't for sports shooting, I wouldn't be shooting on the level that I'm shooting at now. But I just couldn't make that mindset change. And it goes, oh, it's mindset. Man, people can't even change gears and cars. And now they're like, you know, mindset, just like that. It's not that easy. If you're on the top of your game, you're an Uber operator. It's easy to say things like that. But people forget. People are normal people. I'm a normal person. You know, yes, I might do abnormal stuff. And, and that's kind of my job. But take all of this away, this would be too much for me. It, it, it would be too much for me and it would be much too much for most people. And we should stop overwhelming people. Just, ah, any guys, where, where am I now? Uh, <laughs> past my bed. Well, well that, that's, that's actually a good way to, to end this particular episode. I mean, we'll come back for more combatives with Arby, I think, next week, definitely. Uh, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to yeah. I'm, I'm be rude. If we want to do this, we need to, if we want to do this on a more frequent basis, we need to, and people need to listen to what I'm saying, we need to make it short segments because in this industry, you tend to then just repeat the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. You know, it sounds weird, but there's only so much to talk about and, and then you you just start repeating the same thing. So if we ever want to go on this, we must say it's a 15-20 minute segment, maybe tell people, send us a couple of questions, uh, prep us a couple of questions and it's it's not... Yeah, it's marketing, but it's it's let get the people involved. Sorry, we didn't well, we even discuss can... this. I'm just throwing it out here. No, that's actually a very good idea. Um, and we can even pre-record it if necessary. I mean, it's fun doing it live, but I mean, it depends also. Yeah. Your schedule is very busy. Um, yeah, but me not being able to log in and the stress and the way out, lots of fun, lots of fun. But, but I think there's a lot of value to add. And uh, before we go, I think just some marketing from your side. What courses do you have coming up soon? And where are they? And where can people get a hold of you? I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, I, okay, there's a lot of, uh, I'm going to tell the people that. I mean, my clients that I look after, I, I purely look after overseas certain select clients and when they travel to Africa. I haven't been traveling for two years and I sure as hell is not going to travel to Africa in the next probably two years. So right now I'm at this point where I'm looking at a schedule. We're going to look at a schedule till July at least next year and speak to the Rangers and just start booking the co uh, courses out because we're bringing in some seriously premium courses, uh, one day CQB course and, and, and one day um, home violence course, six people only, hell of a force on force, whatever, but that's a 2K course. Uh, so to give people time to 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 kind of save up, and and what makes my schedule right now, we don't even advertise it. I think I've got about three traveling courses coming up, um, to two, three different things, and and I just need to kind of work through that. But we will be posting uh, a lot of training. Something that popped up last night, we're gonna let's call it pop-up courses. I'm gonna do some baton and knife stuff, stuff that I originally only did for the class protection people and for myself. Um, so we do some 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 baton training, knife training. Um, uh, so right now I don't have a schedule, but the schedule will come out in the next two weeks or so. And as I said, we're going to try to post. We doing something January again. Hopefully. Yeah, we uh, we're definitely uh, doing something in January, definitely. Yeah. So I know I'm looking forward to that. We're doing something with Vault somewhere now in two weeks or three weeks time, yeah. and then I'm going to Eastern Cape. So I'm a bit all over the place. Very, very, very happy that it's all happening, but it's just all happening so fast that I just need to. They can go over to Combative Concepts or go to your page, um, uh, get a hold of us. Um, I hate this marketing, you know, just come try me. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the problem is uh, Arne, Arne doesn't like marketing at all. No. Um, so if you want to train with them, just pop me a message and I'll relay. Um, okay, I've, I, you... I am, we are going to try something, something next year called be your own bodyguard. It's going to be a bit of a long-term thing. Uh, I'm going to try it. If, if we get 10 people, we get 10 people. If not, I'm not going to do it. But it's going to be an online class protection course and then some, um, some uh, practical classes and whatever. It's not a uh, accredited course, but it's, a, it's going to be 
a kind of a course that almost encompasses all our training with a close protection aspect to it, full on manuals and things like that. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work well, I park it. Uh, so that's that's going to be something interesting that we're going to look at uh, at next year, where the guys can also buy off in three or four months or whatever a, a nice big course. So we we be grinding at this moment. Force on force might become big, might become big. Now people say you're copying other people. You know what? We started force on force with Airsoft back in two thousand and two. Okay, that's where we started, force on force. We're just now returning to it because it costs us so much money and breaking guns those days. But we're going back uh, big in where we started, where we started 20 years ago, force on force, we're going back that route. 100%. And um, uh, we'll, start, we'll talk about these things, this curriculum, and I'll obviously push the stuff out on my page as well so people mm -hmm. can find it in my Twitter account and all this other jazz. Uh, we are doing something next month. Uh, I've got a f f with False by Farm Training Academy, we've got a night shoot on the 16th of October. It's a Saturday night for those who are interested. And then I'm coming to Durban in November, the second week. You're coming to Durban in November as well, or are you not coming to Durban in November? I'm, I'm, I have to go check my schedule. Um, yeah, probably. I, yeah. I think it's some, 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 sometime that um, I know Eastern Cape and uh, there's some places I need to go that I don't even know where it is. Uh, so. Okay, so so I'll try to keep everyone posted on the Piratas website uh, and the Facebook page and the Twitter account. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. You've been great. I'm going to let Arne get back to bedtime. Um, I have pajamas. And, yeah, and uh, join, well, not join Arne in his pajamas. It sounds very gay. I'm going to separately do my own thing. Um, Arne, thank you for you. Thanks for everyone. Yes. See Thanks. you guys tomorrow. And... Um, Stay safe. Have a lucky evening. Bye-bye.